it, it's just going to be it's going to be difficult for uh, we met on Tinder in the in the fact that they need to shut the game down like before a certain point because with the new patch the mitigation items there's really not that many there's like what there's golden protector there's um the the big shield one ice forge plate yeah ice forge plate and there's i think a couple others that split it between mitigation and uh resistance so the damage output essentially wouldn't have been as bad before the patch but now it's it's going to be pretty insane once it starts getting to late game and then nikolai is is just a really hard late game carry too that will just be pretty unkillable yeah i mean both teams actually have an okay late game call but we met on tinder definitely have the early game advantage that they need to capitalize on like I said, like that melody, they've put her mid versus that bow. I'm not sure if that was intentional to shut down the bow, but it's definitely not going to, to help James's engage any. But it was multitasker on her, which I'm surprised about. Snails is on um, Bastion, as I said. He plays that character quite a few times, so... And then, yeah, Hooligan playing the, the bot lane against Synergy on the Rook. First zone's actually very, very good against Rook um, early game. You see he's reducing Rook's damage a lot. Rook getting level 2 first though is, is great for him to put that pressure on Hooligan. Hooligan popping the pot there. It looks like Caprice just went down mid lane as well. Um, like that mid lane, the, the early catch, if, if uh, Maldi can land that Q on a character, oh, especially on uh, Plague who's got no escape at this point, and then Dudley can just go in as Nikolai with his Q, and it's almost guaranteed. Oblivion dealing out a lot of damage though, and Plague who unable to come up, his stun was on CD at the time. They didn't load me on again, this is dumb, but good luck to you. was moved out of your channel. So uh, Synergy is uh, is actually pushing on Hooligan here, which I'm surprised by Hooligan being first thing, but Hooligan's uh, going in on him now, maybe able to pick up the kill on Synergy very well timed W there to dodge that shield damage. He's trying to poke Hooligan here, but Hooligan having Pinsir is uh, it's really not helping Synergy, I need to get any damage down. And there's a fight breaking out mid lane right now. Looks like Plague just went down. James unable to capitalize on his W there. Yeah, Getting I... stopped by the Malady wall. Nikolai Malady is an extremely aggressive lane, and I really like how they're taking advantage of the fact that Caprice is actually extremely immobile and weak before she hits level 6. And they've shown that already by getting two what seeming to be pretty easy kills so far and getting a very fast lead on that. And we actually even see uh, Featherstone taking down Rook bottom lane too, which is a big surprise because Rook's been known to be the dominant bot laner. Yeah, I mean, Rook really shines in a little bit later in the game, a little bit through the mid game. He's, uh, his burst damage is really, really strong. But Featherstone, yeah, I think he's underestimated bot lane. He's very good in a 1v1 scenario. But I do agree with your your commentary on the mid lane. Um, yeah, Caprice, you rarely see them go with uh, a bound or anything anymore, which I'm quite surprised about because I feel like that pet would keep her alive pre six a lot better than than anything else. I know Mystic definitely helps the damage out for later, but versus a lane like this where she can get caught so easily and there's little bow can do to to mitigate that, it's, uh, it's definitely surprising that you still went with Mystic. Yeah, I find it a little interesting what we saw just now in top lane where Lalonde and Snails were actually farming the jungle in between, uh, basically farming the lane. It's a really effective way to get a quick lead. Uh, if you have, if you can time it well without losing a lot of lane creeps, it's always effective to go jungle a little bit. Just like we see uh, Oblivion and Plagu doing on their, in mid lane with the Ancients on their side. Yeah, see a lot of people don't really, you know, the, the lane creeps, they're not going anywhere. 
you know, they're not disappearing, you see, if you can time, as you said, if you can time it well, where you're not losing any lane creeps, and that you can go and farm that jungle for a quick hundred gold, it's definitely worth doing so. Especially if you have someone like Bastion, you can, you know, you can go in straight away and tank them, so you're not losing any, any HP on your ADC. Yeah, and we see, looks like Malady is sitting in the bush, just kind of sitting back, waiting for probably to get a jump, but more importantly, she's not showing herself. Oh, and a great ult by Nikolai, catching the Caprice off guard, Malady following up, and another kill on Caprice before she hits level 6. This is going to hinder Plague's ability to really roam into the late game, and Malady herself is actually a really strong roamer, so she's most likely going to probably carry her advantage to other lanes when it, whenever she gets the chance. Yeah, it's really unfortunate, as I said. I mean, this little Oblivion can do to stop them going on her like that. He doesn't have any instant CC. He has to rely on his W and his ultimate, which would really only keep her alive for one engage, and it's not worth, well, I would say not worth using, but it's, you know, it's got a long cooldown, and Melody's Q and Nikolai's Q Again, they're going to try to get a pick onto Caprice here before she hits level 6, and she is going to go down. Nikolai dies in return this time. Not too sure how good that trade was, but uh, they're doing a great job at keeping her down. Yeah, well, I see this, like I said, you know, he can't, James can't do anything. I mean, Oblivion can't do anything there to, to stop them jumping on her. All he can do is use his ult, and it was very... Uh, effective him to actually Omniclay into the tower to pick up a kill as well so they can get a one for one trade. Well, Caprice is level 6 now, so she may be able to make a comeback, but it's going to take a lot of roaming and a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of smart roaming, not just kind of, you know, roaming around mindlessly, obviously. Yeah, she is actually bot right now. Um, kind of interesting place to be. Synergy is really far behind. Um, to Hooligan here. He's at a 300 GPM, Hooligan peaking around 430 right now. So, Synergy's definitely having trouble there. And uh, a Caprice Gank could change that for him. Didn't catch it on screen, but Toplin was actually able to go on to the Bastion, get a kill, but Dudley makes a nice roam to turn it around and make a return kill onto Dumble's Moxie. Dudley Almost getting the kill on Wolf, but doesn't follow through. Oblivion here to try to turn it around. Wolf missing his Q. Well, just out of reach, really. He was a, it was a good aim. He didn't exactly miss it. Dudley was able to walk out of it. Uh, Caprice still camping this bot lane. Really, it's almost kind of desperate in the way that he's trying to get back. But uh, Hooligan's playing it pretty safe. I really like his choice of starting item with the Silver Buckler. Uh, with the new change, it gives resistance and mitigation. The mitigation isn't going to be so strong against Rook, but the Silver Buckler has always been a strong item against Rook because most of his damage comes from auto attacks, and this is probably the big reason why he's winning this lane so hard. Oh, there's a fight going on with mid. You see that James just about manages to get away. They tried to go in on Malady, but were unable to capitalize on the engage. Dumble now getting caught by the Q. James with a really nice ult to stop them. Oh. And Moxie picks up the kill with a, with a very last ult. Oh, and Multitasker actually almost going down to the pincer retaliation. But uh, yeah, great ult by Bo to keep uh, Dumble alive there. It would have been yeah, a Yeah, very for good, sure very kill. good team play. Yeah, very good for them. Actually, bot lane as well, you'll see the um, Hooligan Fetstone actually uh, was killed by Caprice and Rook. Synergy did go down as well, but this is allowing uh, Plague to, you know, free farm that lane and push it to the tower. Yeah, it's exactly what Plague needs. Uh, even if it's a trade, they have to find some way to get uh, Plague back in the game. And Rook, too, so. And the big, big fight top lane as well. Lalonde so close to going down, Oblivion probably waiting for the for mana on his Q, but doesn't get it. Lalonde escapes with a sliver of health.
You may see three members of Dem Dirty Hoes at top lane now, I wonder if they're trying to get a pick or... Actually, no, sorry, my mistake, like, I'm on just recall to it's just Malady and Bastion up there. Versus three members of Wiimote on Tinder pushing that lane. I feel like this is a waste of them, they're not really going to be able to push against that hero and... They're wasting a lot of time and potential CS. You see mid lane is actually roaming a lot this game, which I find very interesting. It's a, it's always a fun game when you see the mid lanes roaming a lot. And Hooligan backing off, uh, noticing that Caprice is missing from the map, and oh, Plague jumping under tower. You can see uh, the desperation coming out of him, but you can actually see from the GPM graphs that the game is evened out, in a sense. Yeah, we mounted to have done very good to come back from the, their position, uh, from being behind, just by really putting pressure on those lanes. Just by really putting pressure on those lanes and forcing the uh, the, the members of DDH to, to sit back at the tower and wait for the creeps to come to them. And we see Nikolai roaming bot looking to get a kill onto Rook. Rook being prepared, just backing up and gonna wait it out, it seems like. Malady getting jumped on mid lane though, potentially going down, oh, with the fade away auto attack. Lego has done so well to get back in this game from his previous position. I mean, how many times did he die? Three or four times he was dead and now he's like, second top GPM on his team right now? Yeah. Actually, second top GPM in the game right now. It just goes to show how effective that Caprice is at roaming a level 6. We see the the skirmishes from top lane are now coming into to mid lane with three people in mid lane for the we met on we met on Tinder and the Malady coming back mid to make it a three on three. But Claudius are running back top. Looks like they kind of want to get a little reset. Lund possibly getting caught out. See, it's the thing I like about this update is because the towers are so much stronger, we don't see like characters like this uh, Claudessa tower diving ADCs that low anymore. It makes for much smarter um, plays for, for both teams. I agree. I really like the tower changes. It allows for a lot more roaming too because it's, you don't have to worry about your tower getting taken down as easily. It's a little bit easier to defend. Yeah. But I think that's also why we see so many uh, plunders coming out in, in these games is because that pet has now become one of the the better ones to pick up with its ability to push towers and it also gives flat defenses. We might see some action up here top lane with a nice room by Dudley catching out we might on Tinder in a 2v3. Nikolai picking up Dumble and that seems like a pretty easy kill. Yeah, that was really well played. But they did use three ults to get one uh, to get one pick there. I don't think snails needed to ult necessarily to to win that fight. Um, Leylon needed his ult there to get away um, from Moxie, but yeah, I mean three ults down for one pick. Really, Tinder should be able to to capitalize on that and put a lot of pressure on the lanes while his ultimates are down. Another. Nice thing that I'm seeing from this game is players are constantly farming the jungle whenever they get to opportunity. I don't know if it's a mental change, but um, it's always been a good idea to farm the jungle when you get a chance. But now the fact that you know your team gets an advantage from it as well, uh, it's definitely more effective. And we see Shinergy going on Hooligan, going aggressive, but yeah, I'm not sure if. Yeah, I'm not sure if Synergy knew that Malady was in that bush, because if he did, that was a very ballsy play to, to try and defeat first and her together there. I mean, he could have easily retreated, so I'm assuming that he didn't know she was still in there. Yeah, Malady did a good job of backing up and then entering the bush from afar and then working her way back into position just in case Rook went aggressive. And good play on Hooligan too to bait it as well. Kind of yeah. put himself into a vulnerable position, relying on multitasking yeah. to follow up. See, I actually play Melody a lot myself, and I feel like I, I'm very, it's very difficult for me to get picks until I have Shadow Veil, so I'm learning a lot actually from multitasking here, the way he's using the, 
the uh, blind spots in the vision to, to to get in with his rocket boots in his queue. He's playing actually a very good melody and it's it's helping his team out a lot. His roaming. Yeah, and you can see the uh, right now for um, DDH it looks like Featherstone's kind of taking the lead in GPM. Um, they're slightly taking over overall again. Oh, great CC break by Oblivion to avoid a Nikolai ult. I think. It, uh, Dudley's target there was the Caprice. Oh! Interesting, uh, ult by Oblivion. He wasn't able to capitalize on that, though. I think it was more to get away out of that sticky situation, because he kind of found himself in a 1v3 without the help of the Caprice. Yeah. yeah, he already burned his rocket boots going in, so it was probably after he saw that Melody was there, he was using it just to escape, which is the great thing about Bo's ultimate. Unfortunately, it is a long cooldown, so he's going to have to wait a while before that's back up, but... Better to waste your ultimate than give a kill, I guess. Yeah, most definitely. Especially with the increased death timers now, it's yeah, it's most definitely better to use it than to, than to die. Kind of the walls, all team members kind of looking to farm up, uh, going back to get the health. Oh, Caprice making a jump up, but Nikolai making a great vault onto Oblivion. Possibly turning around, not saving his comrade Caprice though. And now Oblivion's gonna get chased down. Great tops, and then uh, basically Melody coming in to finish it off with her vault. Yeah, that was really good play by DDH, but I feel like Plague is, is really not. Um making very sensible decisions. He could have easily got away once Olivia was all with there, but he decided to stay for some reason. I don't think, uh, I mean, I don't think Oblivion would have survived anyway, but there was nothing that you could have done to help him, so I'm surprised that he stuck around for that. Yeah, he actually used his first jump to jump in, but before he could do anything else, he actually he realized the position that he was in, and by that time, his second ult just wasn't enough to, to escape. Yeah, I mean, it's again, it's it's the picks they have. That Nikolai and Malady lane is is really working out for DDH. And during the pick phase, actually, I was saying I was surprised to see that lane because Nikolai's so easily kited. But they are really, really making it work. And uh, yeah, those two characters are particularly are changing the game for their team. DDH also uh, the advantage that Featherstone had bottom lane is actually showing, and we have a big fight here middle lane. Nikolai, again, using a nice ult to avoid the Oblivion stun. Malady making a pick. Caprice jumping in, trying to finish off Malady, but just can't get it done. Oblivion now in a tough position, gonna get himself Malady stunned, and gonna go down to what looked like an Inferno Brain kill. Nikolai. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing Nikolai's Inferno Brand that killed him there. Yeah. Either that or Tops. Does he have Inferno Brand? No, he has Inferno Brand. I think it was Inferno Brand. Malady did a, Malady did a great job there. He, he popped a pot actually just underneath the tower and was still auto attacking away and landing that Q on, on Oblivion. And although Oblivion used his CC break at the perfect time, like literally just as the Q hit him, it just wasn't enough. And yeah, he, he died to the, to the AoE uh, magic damage from Inferno Brand. And the, that's the mid tower down as well for we met on Tinder there. It's actually cool to see um, a big contribution to DDH's win there was the fact that Featherstone was there and Rook was not. Um, Rook was actually farming bot lane because there was a huge wave, but in addition to the good wave control by DDH, uh, Featherstone was able to roam because he had that uh, early advantage mid and that, that gave them the, the numbers and they knew that they could win that fight if they were engaged on. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually still surprised that Wingman and Tinder uh, are where they are in terms of GPM. They're not that far behind. Obviously, they, you know, it's a disadvantage for them to be where they are, but we're looking at like uh, about 100 GPM more from each character on uh, on TDH's team. Hold on, I'll check the gold graph. I'm not very good at reading this graph, so please bear with me. It looks like that the DDH is about 4,000, 4,500 perhaps above. Um, we on Tinder right now. Yeah, and DDH is actually doing a little split here. They're sieging bot lane and kind of playing uh, tiptoe with We Met on Tinder as they try to take Baldir, but with the new changes, Baldir does a lot of damage and actually scares off We Met on Tinder from going for it. And the split push by DDH is possibly going to get them bot lane generator. We have a Rook ult, so there's going to be a fight up by the Baldir. 
but it's just snails. Oh, it looks like they were able to pick off the, the Vermilion too, but I'm not too sure how it's worth it. How much damage DDH is going to get on the generator. It looks like they're going to get about a half health. A nice CC break again by Oblivion. He's pretty spot on with those, but... Yeah, I mean, that was a really, really good play by Wiimote on Tinder, despite, I think, it happening by accident. Uh, they were able to win that team fight without losing anyone, so they killed both uh, both Vermillion and Bastion uh, without losing anyone, and Oblivion was able to hold that generator on his own versus three people, and now they'll probably be able to go and get that bald deer without any hassle from DDH. Yeah, I originally thought that could have been in favor of... Uh, well, I'm looking at the gold graph here, and it's a little bit spiky during all that, so I'm not too sure who was in favor coming out of that, but looks like the rebound is definitely going to go to We Met on Tinder. Because of those two deaths, it does allow them to get the the Baldir. Great malady wall by Multitasker there to avoid getting caught out by the bow. That's a very... For yeah. anyone that's ever played malady before, that wall is very hard to control, and... To get it perfect like that in a space uh, takes a lot of skill. Yeah, the wall is is difficult. Uh, for me, it takes a, a good two seconds before I can angle it properly to, <laughs> to block a, to block an entrance like that. But I mean, I still think Oblivion did a very good job of um, holding Malady off so that this team could get the ball here. But yeah, Malady that was a it's a really nice wall to stop her getting engaged upon there. Plague is saying hello to Sindara as he tries to escape. <laughs> yes, and Dara not really uh, respecting that. Yeah. Like, get out, get him out of pit. Yeah, taking him down. Giving him a little slap health. as he walks past. And we see uh, DDH looking to set up a set up a pick. This is probably the best thing they can do because they control map. Like they have all their lanes pushing in their favor with uh, Vermilion coming up mid to change that as well, and kind of zoning people out. No one can really leave the base from we met on Tinder and get away safely. And it looks like there's almost a pick. Rook whiffs his ult, gets Nikolai ulted. Oblivion going in. They drop Malady. And we see uh, Nikolai zoning out Caprice while the rest of the team tries to fight. And here comes Vermillion, fashionably late to the fight, but able to help them turn it around and keep the advantage for DDH. Yeah, that was really good for Tinder at first. Um, they got Malady out, but they did lose both of their carries. Like, all, the, Moxie went down almost instantly. He was the first to get picked, and then Rook, after coming out of his hide and seek, was was deleted by uh, by Fairstone. But I I don't think that was all that bad considering the position that they were in during that ambush. Um, we Mount Tinder came out better than I thought they would. Yeah, and considering it was a five v four as well. Uh, they knew Vermilion was mid lane, so they knew they could follow through with the fight. And had Vermilion been there, it could have been a different story. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a bad it. omen for We Met and Tinder that they still lost. Um, they still lost three for for two, even in a four v five. But they, the Malady was was killed, and the first turn was killed, and that's um, I think that's what's important for them right now. Although Vermillion is slowly but surely coming back into the game and he's just picked up a barrier token there which is going to make it really hard for Moxie and um, Bo to get on him quickly. Yeah, so it's pretty clear that DDH is in the lead right now. What do you feel like they need to do to get back into the game? Or what does We Met on Tinder need to do to get back in this game? Well the problem is, is like what happened with We Met on Tinder the last game is that they didn't change their gate, their playstyle at all from behind. They just kept going in. Like, let's see now, Oblivion going, trying to go in uh, on these guys. And the, oh, the a, a catch on to Dudley. Dudley, but he turns around with a nice stone skin. And oh, he's gonna ult in. He catches the Rook at the very end of it. Rook with a nice and vulnerable gets a lot of damage out before he dies. Caprice jumping in, but can't finish off Vermillion. And it looks like uh, a lot of action going on on the other side of the fight, but it looks like uh, DDH is going to come out ahead in this fight, only losing one while we met on Tinder loses two. Yeah, see, this is what I'm saying. I mean, I think we met on Tinder are, are trying to play like they're not from, but like, they, they keep trying to engage fights, they keep going in, and really, if they can get picked, that's great, but otherwise they just want to keep trying to CS as best as possible and, and take objectives when they have the opportunity. I mean, it's going to be hard because... 
at the end of the day, DDH are a very strong team, and see Oblivion getting stuck there. Oh the yeah, that's a multitasker really showing out the mechanical skills he's got with that finality wall. But you see, here it's like they're like the dumb wall getting picked, but Oblivion trying to go in and make something of it after. Yeah. Great really kiting by this Vermillion, but oh man, it's gonna be a one for one right there for Moxie and Vermillion. I think, if, I think if we Mountain Doe got a Hexbane or two, then they could probably still be in this game because if they can take out both those ADCs, then it's pretty easy for them to pick off the Malady and the Nikolai. And but I think, like, it's. Uh, sorry, go on. Oh, I was going to say, and during all this, we actually have Bastion bot lane. Oh, and uh, a Hexbane actually coming out for the Malady. Oblivion going in hot. Alt's back while he's on a little bit of low health. A big fight. Nikolai's gonna ult, but I think he's gonna eventually perish after this one. Great stone skin, but yeah, he goes down, and that fight actually goes in favor of We Met on Tinder, taking that out was, three members. Th and that's just a great Olivia. example of how Bo's ult can completely change the, the tide of a team fight. See, Oblivion caught three of them there, and then Caprice was just able to anchor the two remaining players that were left alive, and it just really turned around that team fight for them. I'm sure that they're still how far behind they are in GPM after after winning that fight and a few others, but I don't oh. think that we met on Tinder out of this game yet. Bastion Windrushing has a great W to get into range of the Caprice as his ultimate pops. And I feel like uh, this GPM difference is really preventing We Met on Tinder to turn these winning fights into objectives. And it looks like they're overstaying a little bit too, getting caught out and uh, kind of throwing their winning fight right there. Yeah, I mean, every time I've asked uh, a high, like a, a competitive player, a high school player, like, you know, what is the biggest mistake the lower skill players make? Um, when like they're losing, when they're behind, they say it's overextending. It's always overextending. You see, like. They won that fight and they had the opportunity to, to, to go back or to keep farming the jungle, but instead they were both the carries were up uh, that tier one tower pushing alone. They had no one to peel for them and they had no vision um, on either of the observatories and they still stayed and that's why they got caught and you know, like you see now DDH are gonna pick up that bomb deer, they're they're paying horribly for just for overextending. Yeah, that was great strategical play too, because they had Bastion and Malady zoning. As soon as Malady threw down that wall, it completely blocked access to the rest of We Met on Tinder. And she was able to come in and help finish off with the DPS as well, so they could get out of there a little bit sooner. Oh, lots of wind rushes going down. Great disengage by Malady with the W and a wall to help speed them up as they run away. They didn't want to fight this because they know they had... Uh, DDH had two top lane. They knew Rook was bottom lane, but they didn't want to fight a 3v4. Yeah, they definitely don't want to fight with, without Vermillion first lane, because they're doing most of the consistent damage, which is why I say if we mount Tinder to pick up two Hex Banes, they could probably come back into this game pretty easily. And now we've got all five team members for both sides in the middle lane, so there's probably going to be a pretty big fight here. Not too sure how much we met on Tinder wants the gauges. Oblivion rushing to the back lane, trying to look for the Vermilion. Featherstone just sitting there dealing damage to the whole team. Lots of alts going off. And the outcome looks like uh, a two for one in favor of DDH. A great melody ult to keep them all stunned in, but nobody to follow up. Shin tried to get a burst down on Vermilion, but can't make it. He goes down as well, and DDH gets away with low health and another kill. Yeah, it just sets skirmish. them further, further behind, things like that. I mean, that was actually not bad for them in the beginning. Their Rook and um, Caprice were out of position for a lot of that fight. Bo made a, a, a semi-decent ult, catching two of the enemy team. But again, like, if I was them, I would have just taken the one pick after Caprice was dead, because without her, they have, and Moxie with no mana, they have very little they can go back in on. Yeah, we see both teams just kind of recouping. Uh, DDH was too low in their health values to actually take an objective off of that. And 
uh, we met on Tinder was too low in numbers to also siege an objective off of that. Uh, but we do see that Baldir is going to be up here pretty soon. It's about, uh, let's say, like six eighths done. And Sindara is up, but that seems like a pretty hefty objective with its damage output right now. Well, let's see uh, Plague getting a stun onto Snails, but Snails retaliating with a nice uh, Fire Breath, or Oracle's Breath, whatever it's called. Ooh, nice Malady, W, and Wall, but Caprice just hops right out. I'm sorry, I'm just mesmerized by that bow skin. I actually like Wuff's <laughs> uh, skin too as well on Claudessa, they are very pretty skins, both of them. I yeah. get myself one of these skins. They're definitely bringing the groovy back to Strife. Right. Sure. So one thing I like about Strife is the art style and how they're not taking themselves so seriously unlike the other motors. Oh, lots of wind rushes going off. Oblivion looks like a great melody all to kind of separate the fight. Oblivion does get in the back to alt a few, but doesn't look like the, his team was able to follow up as they're getting zoned out by Dudley on the other side, and now we Man and Tinder is getting, is getting chased down. Uh, Wolf is getting chased down by a multitasker. He was able to finish him off, and on the other side, looks like Dumble was able to get away and finish off Dudley in the process. Uh, but with Vermillion alive and only Moxie up for we Man on Tinder, it looks like they might be able to actually take an objective off of this team fight. Yeah, I mean, Malady has just been, they have to vote Malady as their MVP for this game. Just the walls that she's been putting down all game have really changed the tide of, like, Rook would have easily been able to escape there if it wasn't for Malady sticking down a perfect wall. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get any objectives off of that fight, but DDH are definitely controlling the flow with this game, and they're just winning team fight after team fight. I'm really... I'm really worried for Wii Mountain to hear how they're going to come back from this game. And uh, they were actually able to split their objective pushing there and slowly wither down the top lane. But I believe uh, we can't see it through the spectator mode, but um, DDH is probably about one ball deer off of the Dark Wave minions. So this is going to be a huge objective each. for them. Do they have one each or two? Two for this team? I think two this for DDH? Is, I think this is the third for DDH. Well, we're, we're, I guess we're about to find out. As uh, it's almost uncontested for this ball deer. And it seems no, like we were correct. Yeah, it was that second. It's, it's one for each team. Now two, obviously, for, for DDH. But it's going to really put a lot more pressure on Wii Mountain Tinder because now if they go for Sindara or if they get killed, then. Um, DDH can pick up that last ball there, and the, the Dark Wave is definitely not something you want to have pushing down on your lanes when you're this far behind. And you can see how DDH is now really taking command of the flow of this game. As they rotate, wherever they rotate, we met on Tinder has to meet them. Oh, great wall by Malady to prevent anybody getting engaged on. And looked like Dudley just ate a Rook ult, but it's not going to face him in any way. It's uh, pretty tanky at this point with three uh, full defensive items. One of them being a stone skin. Oh! Gets... does tops. Dudley gonna go in on there. Super tanky, is hard to kill. And it looks like uh, the rest of the team is gonna come around. Claudessa ulting, leaving a big trail on her way back and looks like Caprice again is gonna be uh, the one to go down here. See, Wii Mountain Tinder, it was, it was four of the members of Wii Mountain Tinder versus just Dudley alone on Nikolai, and they still weren't able to kill him. None of the carries were, were following up on that engagement, and they lost Caprice to Malady and weren't able to kill anyone. I think at that point in the game, when that's happening to you, you know that you're in a really, really tough position. And as I said before, I'm, I'm really scared for Wii Mountain Tinder now. It, it doesn't look hopeful for them at all. Yeah, it looks like the last ditch team fight is gonna go here. Great Malady ult zoning out part of the member members. Oblivion actually having to use his bull ult to escape the fight. And again without Caprice, uh, this is a pretty tough team fight. 
And DDH just walks away with most of their health intact. Baldi is not long off its respawn now, we just got a little more time on that, so it looks like that they're really trying to control the vision in the jungle so that they can pick that up easily and, and just push to end the game. Here's also a note, if you're a little bit new to Strife, uh, when you solo farm a lane, uh, part of that money goes to the rest of your team, so instead of sending multiple people to a side lane to farm, sometimes it's actually more beneficial just to send one person. Yeah, but with that being said, I believe that the to, to give gold to your teammates when you solo farm a lane, um, they have to be away from from the lane? Do they not have to be in the jungle or something to actually receive that gold? No, I mean, they could be in the jungle. Um, for example, once Melody showed up, she was starting to share the gold with Vermilion. Uh, even if she was, like, on kind of inside the jungle a little bit. Uh, it's kind of a proximity thing. And it looks like we met on Tinder most likely understands that Sindara is being taken, so they're going to be trading Sindara for a top lane tower. And they're going to try to push onto this generator here. DDH is, you know, caught on to this and they're, they've done some early backs while still finishing up Sindara to help defend. A couple wind rush, actually two wind rushes coming out. I do not believe wind rushes stack. So a little bit uh, mysterious. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just it's just more evidence that the, the when these guys get behind, they they have a problem from playing from behind. You know, it's the lack of communication and the panic that they're going through right now. Yeah. And um, they're also going to be trying to rushing Baldir here. Um, Bastion Altian, Moxie Altian as well to try to zone them out. They definitely don't want to be giving this up here. Yeah, but it looks like they're going to have to. Oh, Vermillion trying to get an ult in, Rook countering, but getting himself caught out for that slight delay. And then Dumble's gonna get himself caught as well. Melody with a great stun and wall to prevent him from escaping even if he had the chance to. And now it looks like they're gonna be sieging onto top lane, along with Bald or Sindara pushing mid lane. Or Kratos, not Sindara. Oblivion tried to get a stun off onto Featherstone, but Malady coming up with another great ult. Oblivion once again having to use his ult to escape, and DDH is just looking extremely tanky with their GPM lead. Yeah, they may be looking to end here, um, or they might give a safe route, just take this generator and get hold here, but I don't think they need to do that. With the respawn time has increased, I think this is going to be the end of the game. And we actually see the GG well plays coming out. Oblivion standing there looking good in his groovy die. Oh. These guys being extremely DM. <laughs> oh. But they're able to get the kill off before the end, and there you guys have it. We see Dem Dirty Hose taking Gods of Strife number four with that final win. Coming back of uh, after losing the first game too. Really impressive. Yeah, I definitely think the first game they lost because of their picks. They they had a really bad draft, and um, they were relying way too much on Leon's Go Kong to carry them, and just weren't able to to hold the lanes while he when he farmed up. Whereas in the next two games, they played more like a team, like a real team who practiced together and played together regularly and worked together, and you know it was less uh, less reliant on just one player, and that definitely helped them to to you know pull through and win the win the tournament.